Hello everyone, this is Scott. Welcome to my channel, Aviation Kit Builder. Today we're going to talk about the Aladine or Bondurite system of corrosion protection. So I wanted to discuss in detail a little more about the Bondurite uh, method of uh, corrosion protection. I mentioned in the uh, my previous video um, the priming and uh, uh, treatments with chemicals such as Corrosion X or ACF50. Uh, the, the, the Bondurite, formerly known as Aladine system of conversion coating your aluminum, is just another way to slow down uh, the attacks of corrosion. So the system is uh, not overly complicated. Um, however, it does use some dangerous chemicals that you need to take caution with. So basically what you're doing is you're, you're cleaning your metal uh, in an acid, uh, rinsing it off, and then you're dipping it in the Bondurite 1201 uh, chemical, which causes a chemical reaction on the, the skin of the aluminum and, and it creates a, um, some sort of chemical change in the metal that makes it more corrosion resistant. So the, the process itself is that simple. Um, the cleaning and the acid, obviously you have to take the standard precautions of when you're working in acid. Think back to high school science class. Uh, you need to have gloves, uh, old clothing, uh, goggles. Um, you need to have lots of ventilation and, and air. Uh, that, that's the general safety precautions. Um, I'm doing it at the lip of my garage with the garage door open. And then I have a fan that just blows through my garage blowing out. Uh, the, uh, after you dip your aluminum for about three minutes in the, uh, it's, a the acid formulation, it's IC 33 is the formulation number. And I'll show those uh, pictures up on the screen. Uh, after about three minutes, you'll see the aluminum will come out with a dull finish, uh, much brighter um, in some respects, uh, lighter colored, but uh, kind of dull, um, not as shiny as it was before. Uh, you, you rinse it off and get the acid uh, mixture off, and then you're going to dip it for about three minutes in the Aladine Bondurite 1201, which is a really dark chemical. And then after three minutes, you pull it out and you rinse it in another rinse tank. And uh, once you rinse it, you hang it up and let it dry. And that's all there is to it. It, it doesn't take a long time. The, the complications are that the, the tanks, you're going to need some size to be able to do the pieces of your, your, your you know, parts that you're working on. Uh, for the, I'm doing the empennage currently and the, uh, the rear channels, the spars, they're, they're long. And uh, for me to have a tank that those would fit in uh, would be excessively large for my, I have about a two and a half car garage that I'm working with. So I just didn't want to take up that much space. Uh, my airport also frowns on having that kind of stuff in our hangars. Um, it's in the lease that you can't do that kind of stuff there. So even if I did, I, I would have to drive back and forth to the airport, which is a, a 30 minute drive. It, it just adds a complication. So I have Rubbermaid containers that are about 35 inches long on the diagonal. I think they're actually a little shorter than that. I'll show a picture of those too, the, the ones that I chose. Uh, I got them at Walmart. They're $14 a piece or something. Um, and they have lids. And you, you can mix them up and store them. Uh, you can stack them on a cart or leave them out on a table. Uh, you kind of, they slosh around a bit because they're, they're long. So I've just left them in place recently. But uh, you set up your little process and you can do quite a few parts in an hour. Uh, so I'll do some video just showing me doing some parts uh, as I'm talking here. But the... Uh, uh, the special precautions for the, the Bondurite 1201, Aladine 1201, is it's a disposal hazard. You, you absolutely do not want to let this stuff go down the drain. You don't want to dump it out on your lawn. You don't want to put it out on your driveway. It, it's a chromated acid. Uh, it's nasty. Um, 
it, it's not stuff that needs to get into the groundwater or anything. So um, typically what I've read most people do and what I'm planning to do is allow it to evaporate, put it out in the sun, let it evaporate the water off of it, get the material down to, you know, a gallon of the actual allodyne as the, the water that you've added into the mixture dilutes out or evaporates out. And then you, uh, you take it to a hazmat recycling center. So I have that there. I actually made sure I was going to be able to bring this to them before I even started down this road. So uh, uh, I called my local uh, hazardous materials, the same place they take paint and paint thinner and old oil and that sort of thing. Uh, but they, they're willing to take it. So uh, I just need to let it evaporate down to a smaller amount and then I can put it into jugs and take it to them for recycling. Uh, that's the biggest precaution. Uh, the, the same with the acid, you can allow it to evaporate out and you can recycle it the same way. Uh, the, the other precaution is more of a just making it last is that the Allodyne Bondurite 1201 is uh, photosensitive. So you need to not do it in direct sunlight. Uh, evidently, it neutralizes some property of the, uh, uh, the 1201 and makes it ineffective. So uh, when you aren't using it, I'm using clear containers. Uh, I'm putting, uh, uh, I've got some uh, drop cloths that I've put over it. And then I have a piece of cardboard I'm just laying on top of it just to kind of shade it and make sure it doesn't get any, any light on it. Because uh, it is expensive. Um, the, uh, I, I believe the 1201 is about $55 a gallon. But the problem is, depending on where you are, the shipping is hazmat shipping um, for the Bondurite and for the, uh, the IC33, the acid. Um, and and it, uh, it, it's about a $50 per order charge for the hazmat shipping. So uh, the shipping is almost as much as the material. So uh, you mix, uh, for the acid, you mix three to one, of three waters to one acid. For the 1201, uh, Bondurite, the dark mix, the final, that what actually does the conversion coating, uh, that's uh, two parts water to one part of the, of the 1201 material. So uh, you mix it up, you put it in your tubs, uh, and you, you go through the process. Three minutes, rinse, three minutes, rinse, hang it up, let it dry. Uh, once it's dry, you're good to go. Uh, it's an excellent paint prep. Uh, so you can do this and then paint if you're going to paint the, some interior parts of your, your plane, like the seats or some parts that might show without carpet, like I'm going to, um, it, it's a great paint prep. However, you just want to be cautious not to put fingerprints all over it until you paint it. So uh, that's, uh, that, that's sort of the process. Uh, again, uh, I urge the, uh, the safety precautions, safety goggles, gloves, wear old clothing, um, if you have a, an old uh, high school lab coat or uh, a rubber apron uh, like some mechanics have, uh, that might be useful. Just make sure you don't drip anything. I've just been going really slow. Uh, I, I'm, I've done the empennage parts. Uh, they're not a lot. And, uh, and so it's been a good process so far. But uh, if anyone wants to venture off into this, uh, hopefully that's been a quick little overview. I'll, I'll interlay some video and some pictures of the, the chemicals and how I have my little tank set up. Uh, you can do some online research. Uh, actually, uh, you can see the tanks that uh, Sling Aircraft in South Africa uses in uh, some of the Sling, the high wing uh, build videos. Um, that they're doing of the first uh, build assist down there. Uh, I think it's Linda. I can't remember her last name. She's posted on uh, uh, a couple of websites and Sling has done some professional videos, but you can so see their tanks. They're huge. Um, but of course, they're, they're dipping all their parts for their, their quick build. So hope that was uh, helpful and uh, have a nice day.